how's it going? <laughs> it's going fine. How's it going with you? Uh. <laughs> this whole room is booby trapped, I feel. Maybe. I feel like it's been too long and now you've booby trapped the room. Well, I mean, part of it is like when <laughs> getting my life together, I'm <laughs> okay. sorting my shit. Yeah. Um, so I have stuff, uh, but I moved this. The reason you say that is because I moved this table behind me mm-hmm. a little bit closer to behind me so that I could get oh. into the closet. Because <laughs> it feels like. But you have to admit it's gotten better since. It is yeah. much better in here. Okay. Much, much, much. I'm just saying. Overall. It's been a while. It's Where have you been? Where have I been? <laughs> Where, where have we been? Where have we been? We've uh, been stuck in a well. <laughs> it's me. With <laughs> your dad. I'm stuck in a well. With no hot water. Help me <laughs> out of the well, please. <laughs> yeah, we lost our hot water heater. And, you know, this is this is the topic of the show, but I don't fucking care about format right now. Okay, good. <sighs> Well, hang on. Let's We've just... only lived in this house for two years so far. We bought it when it was two years old. So all told, the house itself, the structure, everything in it is only four years old. Mm-hmm. Okay. But we had to replace shit when we moved in because I don't know, like, I, I don't know for sure, but I just assumed the previous owners didn't do a lot of maintenance, probably because the house was new and they felt like, oh, probably doesn't need to be done. Yeah, that and... You know, they just had a baby and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, of course. And a lot of people don't know, hey, this isn't just set it and forget it. You mm-hmm. have to, like, have somebody come out and flush right. it or look at it every yeah. year. But it's a tankless water heater. So it's upstairs in our attic, and it's wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful because yeah. it's it's water on demand like a hotel, And with right? six people. It's wonderful. No matter what time of the day you take a shower, there's always hot water. Right. It's great. But. But. Four years in, it decided to go kaput, and it leaked all over its own insides. <laughs> Which is just... It just... Decided. What I don't understand is why they put the fucking computer, the Underneath most water-susceptible the thing, pipes. at the bottom yeah. of the machine, <laughs> or the water would pool. Doesn't make any sense. Anyways. There's no symptoms, no signs, just one day... No hot water. No hot water. Right. And that was in November... Before, before, before yeah. the end of November, it was yeah. like November 24th or something. Yeah. And we ended up, you know, foreshadowing, we ended up being out of hot water. For 42 days. Yeah, six, almost six weeks. So then we went, we went, we went completely old school and we were heating up water on the stove Boiling and I it, was yeah. washing everyone's hair in the sink. Yeah. And giving you guys wash bins to go do pits and bits and stuff. Like we were, we were 1800s-ing it. You know what I mean? Okay, 18, no, we were just not modern daying it, right? I, like, well, I mean, whatever. I think, it, here's the thing. Like, it, of all of the things that can go wrong, hot water is not the worst thing. Yeah. Because we still had electricity and gas and we could still heat water. Yeah, and we still had water. We yeah. still had cold water coming in. Yeah. And, and you know, with the ice storm that happened recently and the other, like, crazy storm that happened, people go without power and or water. without water yeah. or whatever. And so... It was definitely an inconvenience, though, for, for the six weeks. <laughs> yeah. and, and most of that was because... Hello. All of the plumbers we engaged with mm. were just either sketchy and lying or they were trying to uh, make us pay for an entire thing when the thing was actually under warranty so we ended up getting a, the unit free yeah. in in the end mm-hmm. and just had to pay the labor but we didn't have that information somebody gave us that information the thankfully who nicely have, the people who eventually fixed it for us are the ones who told us hey maybe you can get a just replaced on warranty you maybe call about that first mm-hmm. then there was no vaccinated people there was no vaccinated plumbers there was no mask mandated people right and then we found a, a plumber who was willing to wear a mask. And then the day they were supposed to come out to fix it, <laughs> they called in with COVID. Yeah. So so they couldn't come out. So then we, we called this other company and said, hey, you know, what can we do? And they're like, oh, yeah, we can send those guys out. Uh, we'll send them out next Monday. I get a call on the Friday before and they're like, hey, one of these guys had their 
parents die and they're not going to be able to make it out on Monday. Everything's getting pushed back. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. And so they pushed it out another week. And then that week came and they couldn't send out the vaccinated plumbers because they were so backed up. But they're like, oh, we can send out unvaccinated. I'm like, no, I don't want to take the risk. You know, because this is right. This happened right when Omicron was started to spike, right? Mm-hmm. Or Omicron, however people are pronouncing it. it. The correct pronunciation is Omicron because it's a, a, a Greek letter, but whatever. Omicron, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that was starting to spike here. And so I didn't want to risk it, right? Because even with vaccination, you can still get a breakthrough and you can still have problems, right? Yeah. And some of us aren't fully vaccinated yet in the household because of their, uh, reasons. Their, yeah, their age. And you'd ha- they have to come all the way upstairs, past bedrooms, yeah. into the little attic that, you know, gets flushed everywhere in the house. Yeah. So it's and like people were saying they everybody kept saying, Oh yeah, it's gonna be an all day affair. Yeah, they were scheduling like six to eight hours and we're like, yeah. Oh, this is just getting scarier and scarier yeah. by the minute yeah. because nobody takes it as serious as they should or as we are for definitely for sure not around here i don't think i mean there's probably other families in this area that do are taking it as seriously but we don't know yeah. because they don't have podcasts and we're not talking to them <laughs> yeah but it just seemed like every time we turned around and we're like okay here's the here's the plan yep. it would fall through yep and fall through and yep. fall through again yeah it but kept then falling finally through. finally finally on january 4th yeah which is like 42 days later. And I'm giving everyone every couple of days, I'm giving everyone hair washings in the, in the kitchen sink with warm water. And I was helping you with yours. So like, yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, you would help me with mine because you can't really pour water on your head on your own head. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And we couldn't run the dishwasher because that's hot water only. Thankfully our washer and dryer still was using cold water because You should wash your clothes with so cold water. So we got water, the two, the only two vaccinated plumbers in all of Memphis. <laughs> seeming, yeah, to seemingly. Come out. And I made an extra request because it was since it was after the holidays, and I know like most people are going and seeing other people. Mm-hmm. I said, hey, can you just have them take like some rapid tests before they come over, just to double check? Yeah. And the guy's like, yeah, no problem. So they both tested negative. Yeah. When they got here, I said, could you guys wear these N95 masks as well? Yeah, we because they were them. just wearing gaiters. And they're like, yeah, no problem. Didn't even question it. Just put them on. Yeah. It took literally two hours for them to finish the work. Yeah. They were here for like an hour and 20 minutes or something like that. And (sighs) that's what the most frustrating part for me. And then we decided to be extra safe and and not turn on the air or the heater. Yeah. Yeah. For another few hours just to let everything kind of settle down. Yeah, we had all the windows opened and we were ventilating the house really good because yeah. just to be safe, right? In the, in the beginning of January. And yeah. so it's like in the 40s by that time. Yeah, it got real cold in the house, but it also smelled real nice at the end. Because yeah. <laughs> so we aired that fucking thing. We are thing. safe. Yeah. Yeah. We are hot watered. Yeah. Uh, we are now showered regularly. Yeah. Um, and now we're back. Season four, right? Yeah, I Is guess that what so. we're calling it? Season four. Yeah, I guess that didn't have to be the whole topic. Yeah, well, you know, whatever. We'll it's fine. We'll have to fun. figure out something else to talk about. <laughs> but maybe this so, just to be a catch-up yeah. episode, because we were gone for a lot longer than we planned to be gone. Um, yeah, after just, the True Crime episode, episode 51, we were just going to come back. We were going to take, I think we were going to take the time off for somebody's birthday or something. I can't remember what the plan was, mm-hmm. but then it just kind of snowballed into this hot water thing yeah. and then Christmas and New Year's and hot water thing is still going on. Yeah, it was just a, a all the stress that yeah. that that we could handle at that moment and yeah. we're like we'll just we'll just take the time and get everything situated the way we want it first and then we'll yeah. we'll just concentrate on one thing at a time. Yeah, and then so and then we took a break from this and then I was like, "Well, I'm going to take a break from everything creative output wise I haven't written or drawn anything either yeah. in all that time mm-hmm. which is good because now I'm feeling like like I want to do that stuff again whereas mm-hmm. I was starting to feel like oh god I can't keep up with this yeah which is good yeah and 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 since the last time we t- I'm I'm on the seaweed have you heard of this have you have you <laughs> I think have you we seen talked this? about that before yeah no and then so there's this there's I don't know what I don't. Wait, did you say I'm on the seaweed? Yeah, I'm on the seaweed. Okay. There's 
there's these con- packagings of dried seaweed, but it's teriyaki flavor. And I've tried it before and I'm like, eh, whatever. And the kids are like going to town and they're, they're no. eating like, you know, a few packages a day of it. And I'm like, no. I'll just buy it and keep it. It's good for them, whatever. No. So one day I just sat down and I had like a whole package and I'm like, you know what? This is the bomb. So now I'm like three packages a day of it, like little tiny oh, wow. single serving packages. It's real good. I don't know. I'm liking it. It is very delicious. I've always really liked the flavor of seaweed in it, things. There, there used to be some um, rice chips you could get at Costco that were seaweed flavor. Yeah, and those, those were, were good. Those were really good. Um, I just think the more like healthy, good stuff, plants wise that you put in your body, the more your body wants it, I think. So if you give it like a minute and you try yeah, it a no, couple of times, no. it like, you know, it accepts it. I agree. Like with when that. you were a kid, you didn't eat mushrooms, but since, since, you know, me, you meeting me, now I got you on the mushrooms. Yeah. I didn't eat a good. lot of vegetables, but, but my diet when I was a kid was mostly canned, right? No, didn't it was you have mostly canned veggies like the, too? It's mostly carbs, I think, probably. No. Yeah, we had canned veggies. And that's, you know, that's part of the problem is that those are never going to be delicious. Amazing. Yeah, I still can't get gross. you to eat green beans. Well, green beans are gross. <laughs> green beans are gross. But like we didn't no, have, not. like, I think very rarely we would have fresh produce, mm-hmm. right? In the, in the household, it was almost always canned fruit and canned veggies yeah. or maybe frozen Sometimes Mm. like frozen peas. No. As a kid, I don't remember there even being a produce section. I drink a lot of milk. I remember that for sure. (laughs) I don't even remember there being a produce section. We never went there. It was always just like the middle aisles where it was canned stuff. And then like the the gross meat section. I don't have any memories of going grocery shopping with, with my mom. I have memories of carrying in the groceries after she brought them home. Yeah, our boys do that for me too. And trying to get all of them with one <laughs> trip, but I don't. Rem- I don't remember actually grocery shopping with her, so yeah. I don't know. I think we had apples and bananas occasionally, but mm-hmm. it wasn't a thing like like here with us. We have produce every week, right? Yeah. Like we have some some form of produce. It's maybe not always the same stuff, but. Um, we didn't have a lot of that when I was growing up. It was mostly processed, canned, yeah, boxed stuff. Yeah, um, and I think that's, that's just I the think that, '80s. Too. Yeah, I think that was pretty '80s, '90s it was normal, common. right? Late 1900s normal. I think. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes, late 1900s <laughs> for sure. Um, I yeah. I, so I like eating a lot of that stuff now. Some stuff I don't like, but it's because of like texture or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or like preparation of it. Yeah. Green beans, I just think, don't taste good. I, don't, yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying with it. Yeah. But, you know, you eat Brussels sprouts. Like it's, you know. I like Brussels sprouts and broccoli and cauliflower. And yeah, I love yeah. lots of the vegetables. Love eating peas. I love peas. <laughs> you know, I just, I don't like green, green beans. beans. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I also don't like raw peppers. I don't mind them cooked at all. Oh, wow. Well. You know, like bell pepper. I yeah. don't like them raw. Raw. Yeah. When I make them for you, I cut them up really little. And cook so them. They, and cook them yeah. just so they kind of disappear. It's not about that. It's just that I don't, I like them more tender when mm-hmm. they get cooked. And it, they're just, it's weird idiosyncrasies <laughs> about, about food. Yeah. And it's not like, it's not consistent either. Mm-hmm. Right. Like I don't like cold peas. But I love hot peas. <laughs> yeah. Re- like, mm-hmm. that doesn't make any sense. Not really. S- still peas. But there's a texture difference. Yeah. I think we get hooked on the textures, too. Like, as, I do as for humans, sure. as human beings, we get hooked on the, you know, the crunchy or the, the salty or the sweet. We get, we get hooked on those kind of like. Yeah. It doesn't yeah, matter what not, it is, too. It's not just flavor, right? right? Like, last night I was eating that Tex Mex plant based bowl mm-hmm. dehydrated from bowl from leafside yeah. and it, it was it was bulgur and and grits and i've never had bulgur i don't think before but it had like a consistency of refried beans mm-hmm. so it was like not perfectly refried beans like that it was that um it's kind of mealy no it was mealy like grits right so it was mm. like grainy but it had the thickness like the viscosity of refried beans uh-huh. so it was good yeah but it was also strange. Yeah. It didn't, it wasn't like my brain was going, what am I eating? <laughs> this isn't one or the other thing. Yeah. 
but it was tasty. I liked it. And, you know, super healthy uh, bowel movements, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I The more healthy foods I eat, the less I am desire the sweet stuff, mm-hmm. you know, except for on like special Maya's occasions. Or, day. Yeah, Maya cookie. Those are those are good. Those are really good. And they don't count because they're plant based. <laughs> Uh, okay, what well, they totally do count, um, but Maya's cookies are the best. They're very, very good. Go online, get yeah. them today. Maya's cookies. If you would like to sponsor the podcast, yeah. please, please, you please, you can just pay us in cookies. Oh my gosh, the Black History Collection is amazing. So good. It's so very, good. very good. Look, and they're huge too. They're big ass cookies. Well, they're not huge. They're like. Um, they're bigger than I make. They're huge ass. Yeah, but they're like that. What are those protein <laughs> cookies that, that you used to get? They're like um, a meal replacement cookie. The Lenny's and yeah, something. They're like that size, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they're not like big as your head. Oh, but you know. But when you were reading out the ingredients for the superhero, which is the one that's um, inspired by Black Panther. Uh-huh. It sounded like it was going to be kind of a bitter cookie, Mm -hmm. right? But it is so creamy and soft and like sweet, Mm -hmm. right? It's not, it's dark chocolate for sure, Yeah. but it's not like bitter dark chocolate. Yeah. And then it's got that like kind of a a crust of of edible purple and silver glitter on the top of it, which is... It's amazing. Never mind. It's a delicious (laughs) cookie. I've I've never had such delicious cookies made by outside this house, right? Mm -hmm. Like... You make really good cookies, right? Mm-hmm. But normally when you buy like a vegan cookie outside the house, like... They can go either way, They right? can go either way. They're, They're a little dry or, or chewy. Or, yeah. yeah. They can go a little... Because you have to be creative and you have to come up with different yeah. kinds of ingredients to, to, to simulate eggs and... Yeah, these and, are excellent. I don't think... I don't think if you just had one you would even know that it was a no. vegan cookie Mm-mm. i had no. to double check and make sure because yeah. and even on the box on this this is vegan all over the box such pretty like pink box and and paper and all the wrapping is just beautiful yeah. i yeah. love the whole thing yeah it's and great. it's uh black women owned right mm-hmm. yeah. yeah i love that it's amazing and all of didn't they source all of the black history cookie ingredients from black owned yes. companies yep. and source mm-hmm. yeah that's so cool yep i love that they are delicious cookies, though. So we should link it on our. I'll on our put thing. it. I will put it in the show notes because they're delicious, and yes. I'll also um, reach out to them about sponsoring us for just cookies. <laughs> just send us the cookies. We'll talk about the cookies all yeah, day long. Just send, a, just send <laughs> us a box of cookies a month, and we'll we'll talk about it on every episode. Yes, please. Apparently, they also you said are have a storefront in San Diego. <laughs> yes, in San Diego, and it's uh, California. Ice cream too. Yeah, they. They had on their Instagram today that they had soft serve ice cream. So I was like, it's such a bummer because like all of these great vegan treats are not here, are not in, in Memphis. No. In Nashville, we did have access to the Southern V, which was a really wonderful, like Southern food restaurant that was all vegan. And then on Saturdays they would have like. Apple fritters, apple or fritters and donuts, peach and, fritters, yeah, yeah. donuts. Oh. Their apple fritters are incredible. Yeah, I miss them. I miss them too. And then there was also <clears throat> um, the Falcon Coffee Bar. Yeah, they were the, good too. They had those those vegan empanadas. Yeah. Anyways, deliciousness. Now I'm hungry. Oh, Slim and Huskies. I forgot about them. Oh yeah, they, they did. weren't fully vegan, but they had vegan options. They had enough yeah. options that they didn't look at you weird when you said, "Hey, can you know?" Yeah, you could get a I whole get vegan the, pizza. Yeah. yeah. Can I get the veggie? And they're like, "Yeah." Do you want chickpeas? I'm like, "Um, yeah." Oh my god. Chickpea roasted chickpeas <laughs> on pizza, please. So good. <laughs> so good. Please, yes, please. Yeah, their vegan and then pizzas they were amazing. Would have this like. What is that? It's that like peach some sort mustard. of yeah, peach mustard sauce stuff. I'm like, forget it. Yeah, I can't yeah. even. Yeah, I mean Nashville's worth visiting just for those things, right? Hell yeah, yeah. yeah. If we could just, uh, if we could just stop <laughs> everything. Yes, please. Anyways, well, we already you know talked about the water heater thing, and I thought that's what we were going to talk about. Yeah, I it, we kind of just kind of threw format out the window for this one. But yeah. I think, hey, why not? It doesn't matter, I guess. No, it doesn't. We can do I whatever also, the I, fuck we want. Yeah. This I, is our show. <laughs> yeah, bitches. Oh, yeah. No, that reminds me. Um, I'm learning sign language. Yes. And, 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 and I learned that I'm a weirdo this morning. So I patched myself in. Nice. And um, 
you know, now I'm a creative artist because... Oh, yeah, because you watched that Val Kilmer I watched, documentary. I watched one of the best documentaries I've watched in a long, long time. Yeah. And now I have, like, a creative kinship with Mr. Val Kilmer. What was that one called? Uh, it's just called Val. It's just called Val, yeah. not being Val or anything? No, I don't think so. It's just called Val, and no. it's on Amazon Prime mm. with A24 Studios or something like that. And... um. It's sort of sad, but in the way it's really hopeful. I think we need to do like a whole okay. podcast for that because there's a lot I want to say about it because it touched me. It touched it touched like my yeah. my heart. And I I feel a kinship to him when like of course growing up I knew who he was and Top Gun and Iceman and Hello. Yeah. But, you know, I didn't take it too seriously. And I hate when that, or I really love when that happens, when you don't take something seriously and then all of a sudden when you're 43 and... This just sounds very specific I know, to you. And you, you, you know, but you're, you're at a certain age and then you didn't take anything seriously and now all of a sudden you see it in a different way oh. and you go, oh, I need to take that seriously because yeah. that means something to me now when it never really did. Yeah. So, next time on... <laughs> on Louie and me you want to do that next week okay we can yeah that's fine I, I liked that documentary I thought it was good but yeah I'm learning the sign language I've mastered the alphabet part of it like mastered I've figured out the alphabet yes. part of it like for a very long time I've wanted to learn sign language and there's no I don't think there's any real reason for it because I don't know anybody personally who I need to communicate with regularly that is uses impaired. sign languages mm -hmm. or, or is, is yeah is he hearing impaired but i've always been very drawn to it and i don't know why mm -hmm. um, i'm always enamored with people who know how to do it sometimes i watch asl videos just because like it's almost an art form and it's yeah. so impressive mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm trying to learn it i got um, some books coming to help i i've got the alphabet and i can count to 20 <laughs> i know some like conversational stuff but i'm hoping these books will help me learn more it very much helps me to see a visual yeah of it and then just repeat it practice it mm -hmm. but i i don't know one time and this is going to sound awful i got i was i got really high i was smoking the, <laughs> the cannabis and i got super high mm -hmm. and i went into my sister's room looking for her and she wasn't in there but she had a book on sign language sitting on her bed. I don't know why she was looking at a book about it. She'd got it out of the library or something. And I was like, oh, that's that's really cool. I love sign language. And so I sat down on the side of her bed and I picked up the book and I was looking at it. And I was looking at like the, all the hand signs for the different mm -hmm. things. And I was like, oh, that makes that makes so much sense. That that is a perfect symbol for octopus or yeah. whatever, you know? Like that that this might not be too hard to learn because it makes sense. Like uh -huh. the 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 shapes make sense to what you're trying to communicate. Um and I'm going through it, I'm going through it, and I'm looking at it. And at a certain point I feel like, oh, I can read this. <laughs> It had English all along with the pictures, right. but I was in my mind, I was like, I'm learning this right now. And then my sister comes back and goes, what are you doing? And I looked up at her and I was like, I know sign language. And it's she's like, like, it's like Keanu. Yeah. I know Kung Fu. She's like, you're high. Get the fuck out of here. But I was like, I was like, no, I think I get it. I think I understand it. And it kind of clicked with me. Mm -hmm. And so like, I just, I've always really wanted to learn it, but I've never had like, I don't want to say the time. I've had the time. I've just never had, I think, the patience or the the clearance yeah. in my mind to focus on it. Mm -hmm. um, the self-permission. And, so I, you know, I think in some ways I've made the excuse that, oh, well, I don't have anybody to talk to and I won't stick if I don't use it. Yeah. If I don't communicate with people. Yeah. Right. Um, so I don't know how that's going to change, but I want to learn it. I want to. I want to be able to, you know, if I run into somebody who's hearing impaired, be able to have a conversation with them. Yeah, that would be amazing. Right. I would I would love to know all languages like if like a superpower, uh, uh, like, a, like a linguist. Yeah. I mean, 
but just know them. Oh, like, just know them. I don't want to do <laughs> any of the I work. I <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't want to reduce the fact that it's very don't hard work. Yes. But like if you were picking a superpower out of the air. You like, just want to know all language? I feel like that would be an amazing power. That would. That it, would. it doesn't help you in a fight. No. Well, it helps it could. you get out of out a fight. Out of a fight. Yeah. There you go. But yeah, it just, I think it would be amazing <laughs> to just understand. Yeah. Everything. Everyone. And be able to also talk, you know, speak back with them. Yeah. I think that would be an interesting thing. And that would be super cool. I don't think it's possible to actually do that without a superpower, right? Like you can learn a lot of languages and some are going to be really interconnected with each other because they're based in the same root. Mm -hmm. But I think that it's, you know, even if I had been doing this my whole life, I don't know that my brain works in a way that I personally would have been able to learn. Yeah. Without some sort of like mystical supernatural <laughs> interven- intervention, but it, but I do feel like ASL clicks. Well, it's cool, right? Like the mm-hmm. like even when I was going through the lesson for the alphabet, I was like, oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Some letters don't make a ton of sense. Like yeah. X X looks like a lowercase R doesn't really look like an X. Yeah, but most of them make total sense, right? Mm-hmm. And then you just have to remember the exceptional ones. Yeah. Like Z. Z is the only one where you don't make a shape with your hand. You just trace <laughs> in the air. You're like, Z, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which, like, that one is, uh, that one's really memorable because mm-hmm. it's so different than the other ones. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm interested in learning it. I would like to, I'd like to learn conversational so that I could have conversations with people. I don't want to be super formal about it either. yeah but i also want to be thoughtful about it and not learn things that are offensive right who yeah. have to speak um that way all mm-hmm. the time right i don't i don't i want to be cognizant of my privilege to make it a hobby to learn right. sign language and it's not a necessity yeah. right so i don't i don't want people to think i'm taking it lightly i'm yeah serious about it and i'm sincere about it Mm -hmm. yeah so anyways well that's nice i like it thanks (laughs) all right so it was a good catch up super short episode no it's not it's first time back (laughs) season four this is our 52nd episode. I don't think we have an excuse. We have all the excuse in the world. This here's is th- our days. Here's the thing. I thought, honestly thought, that we would talk about the water heater way longer. Yeah, but, but it, I mean. Because we spent so much time we, in that yeah. mode, I felt like this is a big story. <laughs> and it turns out it doesn't take too long. It doesn't take too long to recount the whole thing. Oh, my word, everybody. Guess what happened? It was like it was a blocker. Like at work, <laughs> at work, we have to say uh, what I worked on yesterday, what I'm working on today, and if I have any blockers. And uh-huh. it was a b- literal blocker for six weeks yeah. every day for me <laughs> because I had to like either figure out where the next plumber was coming from yeah, or deal with that, you know, thing mm-hmm. or just straight up anxiety about it not being fixed. Yeah. Or straight up anxiety about somebody's going to come over today and I got to figure out how to vent this whole house yeah. and keep them away from us. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I will say that we had two different, three different plumbers come over and all of them were very cool about it and mm-hmm. were thoughtful and wore masks while they were in the house. Yes. The one plumber wouldn't touch anything, asked me to open doors and stuff. He was being very, very cognizant of our concern, which I very, very much appreciate. But yeah, it was still anxiety through the roof for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's trying to protect all of us. Well, it's not just like, you know, we're all fairly healthy people. We eat well. We don't get super sick when we get sick, right? Mm -hmm. And so maybe we get COVID and we get to be one of the lucky few that it's just a mild cold to us. But the problem is, is that that's a gamble. Yeah. And it could just as easily become myocarditis or long COVID with worse symptoms forever. Mm -hmm. Right? So, okay, I get COVID and I die. That's it. Thanks for everything so Jeez, long, Louise. right? No, you don't have to worry about it anymore. But if you get long COVID, how long can you not uh, smell or, or, or taste 
yeah, you hear all like the horrific or worse things times like times that people are yeah. going through, and then so all, I'm just not interested. All in that medical expense experimenting is n- not being picked up by anyone. Right, that's your responsibility. Right, and and that in itself is terrifying. Yeah, even if you just have to go to the ER because you're panicking. Mm-hmm. That's that's another thing, right? I get if I get COVID, I'm gonna definitely go to the ER regardless of whether I need to because I'm gonna panic about right. it, right? And I'm gonna think that my panic attack is definitely shortness of breath, and, definitely and I'm dying. definitely dying. Yes. And so then now I have this huge medical bill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just don't want any of that. Yeah. And I don't want the, any of that for you guys. Yes. Right. Yes. So anyway, I don't want this for anyone ever. But no. you know, I we but can't. We can't protect you and I else. can't control that. No. Obviously, you and I can't control anyone out there except for the people under this roof. And, you know, at some point it has to at some point it has to be up to other people to take their, you know, to take responsibility for their own actions. Yeah. They just don't want to do that. I think there so are now a lot we're of all people, suffering for that. I think, I think there's a lot of people who are taking it seriously. And thankfully. But I also think there's a lot of people who were taking it seriously and have just kind of been like, well, I got vaccinated. I'm fine now. Yeah. I, it's still scary. It's, it's, you can still get a. It's still very scary. You can scary. still get long COVID vaccinated. Vaccination is very protective against death. And it's kind of protective against hospitalization, yeah. but it's not that protective against getting it, an I infection. Mean, it's and hard. the infection, once it's inside yeah. your body. Yeah. It's hard because I understand people's like, well, I did everything I could to protect myself. But what about, you know, the l- little kids and older people? Well, it's not and just about I you. Know, uh, yes, right? I know that. But I'm saying is that it's it's almost like attempted murder to everyone else well other than you if you i agree with that if that person gets sick and actively goes out without a mask and goes around people yeah but i'm but if somebody's just just being a jackass and like i'm not gonna wear a mask anymore because i'm vaccinated that's not attempted murder right no but it's it's very very not thoughtful and very very selfish because what's very easy to handle for one person is not for another yeah. and especially with with kids in school are you kidding me right yeah. now Seriously. i guess I, I guess it's just there are definitely people who i want to assign malice to their behavior yeah but there are other people who i think their behavior isn't malice it's apathy yeah or just like being done with it they're like well, fuck I'm- i don't want to do this anymore i'm fine i'm vaccinated I got COVID. I was fine. And they stopped thinking about. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. I think that's a very dangerous too, is it like is. if somebody gets COVID and it's mild, yeah, then they just stop thinking about it as being a, a, yeah. a bad thing for other people yeah. too. Right. And I'm claustrophobic. I don't like things around my face. I still wear two masks to pick up groceries. I, I was in the hospital with a heart thing for three days. I wore the mask the entire time. There is no excuse. Yeah, I know. But I'm saying we all have to kind of carry our own shit. I mean, there are legit medical reasons for not wearing a mask. But what I found is the people who have those legit reasons either stay home or, you know, or they wear the mask anyways. Yes. It's the people who don't have an I actual legit believe. reason that go, I ain't wearing a mask. You I can't, can't fucking make me freedom. <laughs> freedom. I can't, I can't believe we're still talking about it, though. I, I thought yeah, it's getting old. Let's stop. I thought in like 2022 we would have it no. somewhat like, but it's still not. People have stopped talking <sighs> about it, which is scary ish. We me. should here. Okay, this episode has become uh, what's coming up. We should do a uh, we're moving to Scotland episode. <laughs> <laughs> Expatriates, here we come. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know if that's just listen. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed it. Hang in there with us because we love you. Yeah, and I love you. I love you too. <laughs> If you enjoyed this episode of the Lou and Me podcast, subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, or Spotify. And follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Lou and Me Podcast. Lou and Me is a Matthias Horse production, produced and edited by Moose. The song is No Carpets by the New Forevers, hosted by Lou and me. Thanks for listening. <laughs>